Okay, so um, the first thing I want to go over is just a review of the really most basic concepts in poi spinning. Uh, I want to go over poi length and I want to go over planes. And I want to kind of redefine them to conform to uh, the, the nine square theory. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is poi length. Um, uh, I'd like to explain why my poi are always about this long. Um, so basically the reason I spin them at this length is because uh, of two reasons. One is because it allows me to facilitate in-swing kind of moves. Um, if they were any longer, it would start becoming sort of impossible to do it. Um, uh, so, and that's, you know, both of these reasons are purely tech-centric. A lot of people spin with longer poi, and uh, I've actually had a few, obviously, uh, pretty heated debates about poi length and how long they should or shouldn't be. Um, so, uh, when it comes to other spinners, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, more dance-centric uh, spinners uh, spinning with longer poi, and that's fine, um, but um, for the purposes of this sort of tech-centric um, uh, theory, it helps to have the poi be a very specific length. The further away they are from these lengths, it seems to be the more difficult to, to uh, conform to it. So the reason, uh, the other reason that my poi is this long is because of the Coriolis effect, um, otherwise known as the law of conservation of momentum. If uh, uh, basically what it means is if you take uh, a spinning object of a certain radius and you reduce the uh, radius of rotation, it will tend to speed up. So we can kind of demonstrate that by going like that. Not very, not very good. But you can see it kind of speeds up. And I'm sure most of you guys have played with this before with like a ball on a string or something. Um, uh, but so... As far as this ball and this string, um, the fact that it speeds up when you reduce its rotational radius uh, can really help, and in fact it probably helps most of you uh, with certain moves without you realizing it. Um, so I want to, uh, to explain this exact length in relation to the Coriolis effect. Um, when I spin, in the style that I spin in, I usually work in either um, two, three, or four pedal flowers. Um, I typically won't go any higher than four pedals. The four pedals typically align to the nine square grid. And um, the speed of rotation and the alignment with the squares, as you guys will find out later, is sort of pivotal to... Uh, to this whole theory. Um, but basically, like I was saying before, um, I usually use no more than four petals. And four petal flowers are a three beat move. Uh, if you break it down into its most basic timing, um, uh, I know it's kind of weird to say that a four petal flower is a three beat move, but it, if anybody's taken Nick Woolsey's, uh, or watched Nick Woolsey's YouTube video on flower timing, it actually makes a lot of sense because the upper pedal doesn't actually have a beat. It's, it's going up as it goes around. So if you count like a four pedal flower, it's going to be one, two, no beat, three, and four. Um, uh, so, or I, actually, I shouldn't count the fourth beat, so it'll be one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's a three beat uh, move. Uh, back to the Coriolis effect, if you take something's radius and reduce it by a factor of three, its speed will increase by a factor of three. And this is sort of the key thing. So if I, um, if I take my arm and move it in an extension, the poi is moving at a certain speed, and my shoulder is revolving at a relatively low uh, rotational speed. If I stop the rotational center is now my hand instead of my shoulder, so the poi speeds up its uh, RPMs. And 
the closer you can get your poi to a third of the full extension length, the closer it'll be to uh, being three times as fast when you do this. So typically my poi is going to be is going to be a third of the entire length, or you could also look at it as being half of your arm length because um, you know your arm is roughly two equal segments. So I've got my shoulder, and I've got um, my hand, and then I have the poi. Uh, and this is going to help a lot in the future, basically, uh, when we start getting into anti-spin flowers, because it makes it so it's very easy to go from a long arm to an anti-spin. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about for this particular video was just introducing you guys a little bit more to the 9 square um, in relation to the basic concept of planes. Um, so, uh, everybody knows about planes uh, these days. With uh, You've got your, your wall plane, your side plane, and your floor plane. And um, I just wanted to kind of uh, throw the concept of dividing uh, this space that I'm working in, in these three planes, into a cube. So, um, typically I spin in a wall plane because I'm a tech spinner. Um, and I'm going to be working inside of the cube in sort of this uh, plane and uh, depth. I can work in front, I can work in the center, and I can work behind uh, myself. And basically I'm utilizing this nine square grid in front of me, to the side of me, and behind me. Uh, I can do the same thing in floor plane, where I can work above my head, I can work in the center, and I can work uh, down low, which would be the equivalent of using these three levels uh, divided up into their constituent nine square, square grids. So basically, um, it's sort of like a Rubik's cube. You have a cube with nine subdivisions on the side, and uh, it breaks down to 27 uh, separate squares. I guess the only square technically that you couldn't use would be the very center core square, which would be your body. Uh, you can't really spin in your body. Uh, uh, so, this nine square grid is body centric and it moves with you. So, uh, more on this later, but basically, if I move over, or if I turn or something like that, um, this, the, the whole cube is going to follow you. Uh, and it, again, is representative of the extension limitations of your arms. Uh, okay. So I think that's about it for this particular video. I just wanted to review those things to give you kind of an idea. In the next video, we're going to talk about timing, and I'm going to try to redefine timing with this, uh, this grid um, to help better understand how timing relates to uh, spatially where you are because uh, it tends to improve your flow if you define a location for a specific type of timing. We'll go over that next time. Uh, so, uh, catch you in a second.